I captured an image of the largest black hole in the known universe. It comes in at 40 billion solar masses, 140 trillion times brighter than our own sun. So this photo must be insane, right? All right, I'm gonna level with you all for a second. Most astrophotographers would never bother to take a photo of TUN 618 purely because it's not visually interesting. But once we understand this object in its context, I think the image itself has a lot of interesting story behind it. So TUN 618 is all over the internet, and what is it? So TUN 618 is a hyperluminous, radio loud quasar located in the constellation Canis Venetici about 18.2 billion light years away. It's the largest known black hole in the universe and it is a very special object. But what does all of those mumble jumble words even mean? So to put this really simply, TUN 618 is a very big, very very hungry black hole which means it is the leftovers of a star which collapsed in on itself forming a black hole with the singularity in the middle. This is, again, the largest black hole that we know of in the universe, and it is a quasar. So a quasar is just a type of black hole which is currently feeding or in the process of consuming one or more stars. And what happens to a black hole when it consumes a star? It doesn't eat it all right away. All of this matter of the star slowly falls in and spins into the black hole forming what's known as an accretion disk, which is that big cool ring thing that you see in the interstellar movies. That's what makes a quasar a quasar. It's this very bright disk of material that's slowly falling into the black hole, and this is what makes quasars so bright. These objects can be so bright that they even outshine the galaxy that they're contained within. And this is even the case for TUN 618. We can't see the galaxy that it's inside of because the quasar is just so bright it outshines it completely. It's like trying to see the stars in the daytime, you're just not going to see it because the sun is so bright. It's the same way here. And that's why uh, it's called a hyperluminous. Now what does radio loud mean? Radio loud for a black hole or quasar simply means that it puts off a strong radio emission. And these objects that put off radio emission show some interesting structures that actually was part of what led to the discovery of this particular object. Now the discovery of TUN 618 goes all the way back to the 1950s from the Tonazitla Observatory in Puebla, Mexico. Using the 0.7 meter Schmidt telescope from this observatory, the astronomers there were conducting a high galactic latitude survey of blue slash white dwarf stars. This basically means they're just pointing their telescope at every single spot in the sky and they're looking for things. Now this survey is intended to look for small blue stars, presumably to at some point discover some kind of planetary nebula or something else interesting from these stars. Now when this survey was being conducted at the Tonazitla Observatory, they noted this peculiar colored object in Canis Venetici that they said quote-unquote was decidedly violet in color. So right away from its color they could tell that it was a bit irregular for any other kind of object they were looking at, especially in this area of the sky, and so they noted it down in their TUN catalog for the Tonazitla Observatory, TUN 618. And for the next 23 years, this object sat unnoticed on this catalog because they didn't know what it was. Sorry, for the next 13 years, it sat on their catalog. You have to think about it from the perspective of the times. This was the 1950s. They didn't even know what quasars were or recognize them as possible objects until 1963. So no one would have even acknowledged that this could have been something for the next, you know, 10 to 13 years. And it wasn't until they did radio observations that they noted there was something strange going on. So 13 years later, from a radio survey in Italy, they noticed that there was some radio structure around TUN 618. And so this object was resurrected from the catalog and it was then known to be a likely quasar candidate. So radio emission by itself isn't necessarily a dead giveaway, so some follow-up observations in spectra were performed from the McDonald Observatory in West Texas. Now this just means they looked at the composition of the nebula, they looked at the absorption and the emission lines, 
of the object to decide what it was composed of and if it lined up with other known quasars. And they found that the spectra did align with that of a quasar, but that it was also highly, highly redshifted, which means it was incredibly distant. In fact, it was about 18.2 billion light years away, which is quite extreme. The fact that we can even perceive this object, even with a somewhat amateur telescope while it's 18.2 billion light years away, kind of clues us in to how special and bright this object really is, and it's pretty insane. So as I said earlier, this black hole is about 40 billion solar masses, but how do we even know that an object this far away is that massive? And the answer is some interesting physics. So by using the Doppler effect, we can actually look at how the light of the gases around the black hole shifts in color slightly. From this, we can determine the speed. Things moving towards us are blue shifted and things moving away from us are red shifted. And from this, we can kind of deduce some speed information and that's what we did in the case of this quasar. Now, looking at the hydrogen beta emission of the gas around the disk, we can see how it's blue shifted or red shifted around the core of the object and they've recorded speeds of up to 10 and a half kilometers per second. Now these speeds are very fast for a quasar and these lower bound speed estimates give a minimum mass of this black hole being 40 billion solar masses. Now it could in fact be larger than this and given we're looking at this quasar as it was almost 20 billion years ago, it's probably had a couple billion years to grow larger in size. So in reality, Ton 618 is probably much larger than we're seeing it right now, but just because we're seeing it at the beginning of the universe, roughly speaking, we're looking at it back in time. So now that we know where it is, what it is, how did I actually go about taking a photo of this quasar? Now being 18 billion light years away, uh, this thing is pretty small in the sky. In fact, it's pretty much just a dot and it's only ever going to be a dot as we observe it from Earth with our own telescopes. So knowing this, I used a quite large telescope, a 16-inch Ritchie Creation Telescope located at Sierra Remote Observatory to collect images of this. Now this telescope is quite special in the amount of resolution it has, but you can even see this quasar with some much smaller telescopes. If you look on Astrobin and check TUN618, you can see other people have photographed this with much smaller instruments. But again, the bigger the better, and the darker the skies, the better. I spent one night photographing this object with this telescope and was able to resolve a nice little small dot showing the quasar. So one question you probably have on your mind is how come the largest black hole in the known universe is so tiny? And the reason is because it's just incredibly far away. I'm sure if this object were quite closer, then we would see some more interesting traces of it, but simply put, it's a bit of a miracle that we've even noticed it, given that it's, you know, consuming things and has an accretion disk. If it didn't have an accretion disk, the black hole would be black, so to speak. We wouldn't know it was there, it would be just be so far away and so dark, there would be no signs of it. So it's really quite lucky to notice something so bright, so far away. It really only comes through as just a dot, but this dot is still incredibly impressive given its distance. Now, there are other nebula in our sky that do show traces or signs of black holes that are a lot closer. These black holes are not as big as Ton 618, but there are traces of black holes in the night sky and nebulae like the Cygnus X1 shockwave or even the M87 ejection jet. These are the most two obvious giveaway signs of black holes in our sky, but it's pretty much impossible for us to resolve anything like the event horizon of these telescope of these black holes, despite their massive size. One thing that's really a misconception with that a lot of people have is the nature of the scales, the distances, and the sizes involved with objects in space. Something can be very big, but despite its size, may be unresolvable or something may be very large and far away and we can see a lot of details in it regardless. It's, it's a bit confusing to try and grasp, but the only way that we as humans have ever been able to see the event horizon of a black hole is with the EHT or the Event Horizon Telescope, which is a connected network of radio instruments across the planet. Using interferometry, they're able to get 
extra resolution and be able to resolve the event horizon of certain black holes, namely the one in M87 and also Sagittarius A star. Now these are the largest black holes by angular size pretty much that we can look at. They're basically the lowest hanging fruit of the black holes that could be imaged in the night sky. Something like Ton 618 is simply much too far away. It's basically at the beginning of time, essentially. It cannot, we could never really see the event horizon of this object, but we can see its accretion disk because it's just so incredibly bright. So for this image, again, I spent one night of 10 minute exposures in RGB so that we could see the black hole in color. Now this object is surrounded by a number of faint galaxies. Given its location in the sky, there's really not much going on here except for some small faint background galaxies and stars. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video about the Quasar Ton 618. There are a lot of videos on YouTube about the size and the immense scale of the Quasar that are really great to check out. I really recommend Kurzgesagt's video about it. Incredibly interesting, but I found there weren't a lot of videos telling the story as to how this was discovered, which I found to be pretty interesting. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're looking to support the channel, I have fine art prints of my work on my website. I've got image processing guides for astrophotography, and if you want to come learn astrophotography in person, I have a number of workshops coming up uh, pretty much always. So, feel free to check those out on my website, which is in the link in the description. And if you're also looking to get into astronomy or astrophotography, I've listed some recommendations for telescopes in the description that you can check out and have a nice experience looking at the night sky. So with that said, thank you guys for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.